What's going on, YouTube fans? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another video, man. Before I get into this video, I just want to give y'all a little disclaimer. We don't glorify the streets on this channel. We bring videos like this so the youth can know what can happen if they go down this path, you feel me? And also, man, we don't do no ratting on this channel. Everything I'm saying is public information. You can Google it. But with that being said, we're going to get right into it. Today, we're going to talk about Kenneth Supreme McGriff. Let's get right into it. Supreme was the middle child that came from a family of three. Supreme grew up in a middle class lifestyle. His parents were both transit workers. He was a 5% and part of the 5% nation. They believed that 5% of African Americans were destined to be natural leaders. Born September 19, 1960 in Baisley Park, Southside Jamaica, Queens, McGriff came to power in early 1981 after being introduced by fellow 5% member Prince to drug kingpin Fat Cat Nicholas, in which he had a vision. After this, Prem went to form his own crack cocaine distribution and manufacturing organization, which he called the Supreme Team. The Supreme Team, based out of Southside Jamaica, Queens, New York, under Supreme's leadership, the gang's numbers swelled to the hundreds and came to control the crack cocaine trade in the Baisley Park neighborhood where Supreme was raised. After becoming one of the most powerful men in Southside Jamaica, Queens, of course the police were hot on Supreme's trail. After years of making money and controlling the streets, in 1987, McGriff was, was arrested following a federal investigation. In 1989, Supreme pled guilty to running a continuing criminal enterprise and was sentenced to 12 years in prison, in which he served seven years. But upon release, Supreme was sent back to prison on parole violations and was released after two and a half years in 1997. McGriff came home and still had the name and power. It's alleged that Supreme had connection in the 2002 killing of Ron DMC's John Master J. Also, it's alleged that he had ordered the 2001 hit of Tupac's affiliate Eric E. Moneybag Smith in retaliation for the shooting of Supreme's friend, Colbert Black Jess Johnson. Probably the biggest thing Supreme was known for was his alleged connection in the attempted murder of Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, which it was said Supreme felt as though 50 was a snitch for mentioning his drug activities and others involved in 50's song Ghetto Quran released in 2000. McGriff, even though heavily connected to the streets, was trying to go legit with getting involved in film and the music industry, seeking help from Irv Gotti to film a movie based on the book Crime Partners, McGriff and Irv Gotti created a friendship at the meeting at a video shoot for Ja Rule, in which Irv Gotti said in a DJ Vlad interview, he saw that Supreme was trying to turn his life around and go legit. Gotti being from Hollis, Queens, and Supreme being from Southside, Jamaica, Queens, the two put the neighborhood beef aside to get money together. At this time, Supreme rode with some of the most talented artists in the game, such as Ja Rule, Jay-Z, and others. As Jay-Z once said in a song, I put Prem in the truck, told him leave the streets alone. I predicted jail would happen. I tried to put him on. As Murder Inc. was running through the music game, a Southside Jamaica Queens rapper named Curtis Boo Boo Jackson, a.k.a. 50 Cent, did not like the fact that Irv Gotti, Ja Rule, and Murder Inc. had connections with Supreme because of the alleged attempted murder on 50's life by someone from the Supreme team. After this, 50 came at Ja Rule hard. The two teams, G-Unit and Murder, Inc., had many run-ins. All this would go left after the 2003 raid of Murder, Inc.'s offices by the feds. The feds thought that Murder, Inc.'s label was funded by drug money from Supreme and Griff and Irv Gotti, and the label's assets were frozen, and they were accused of money laundering. Murder, Inc. eventually beat the case at the record show all the money was legit and from artists on Murder, Inc. because of their success. But the streets in the game would come back on Supreme, and on February 1st, 2007, Supreme was convicted of murder for hire in a federal court. It's alleged he paid two rivals 50000 to have Eric E. Moneybag Smith and Big Nose Troy Singleton gunned down. In 2011, Supreme was found guilty in murder conspiracy and drug trafficking. On February 9th, 2007, he was sentenced to life in prison. He had a court-appointed lawyer because his assets were all seized. McGriff began, McGriff began serving his sentence and ADX Florence, the federal supermax prison in Colorado, but in 2011 he was transferred to a high security federal prison in Virginia. Now, man, I wanted to do this story because I just watched a Vlad interview with Irv Gotti where he basically was explaining the situation 
you know, Murder Inc. went through some tough times where they basically took all their money and all that because they thought Supreme was funding them. But like Irv said, Supreme was the man in the 80s, you feel me? After going to prison and stuff like that, you got to get money on your books. Your family still got to eat. So I'm pretty sure he ain't have as much money. Of course, if you tied into the streets, when you come home, people going to give you money. They going to give you stuff, you know, things in that nature. But I just feel like this is a good story because it let people know, man, like these dudes, they born leaders like him, like Supreme, you feel me? Like people like that, you know what I mean? Like Larry Hoover, like Big Meech. They could do anything, you feel me? But they get involved and they become products of their environment. So instead of doing something positive, everything turned bad. But basically what Irv Gotti was saying, the feds already knew that Prime ain't had nothing to do with Murder, Inc.'s label. But they wanted to take Irving on money so they couldn't help Supreme in his case. Because, of course, Irv would have helped Supreme out. So by them doing that, Supreme ain't have no money to fight his case. So he ended up getting life in prison. Now, man, Murder ain't still around. They doing good, you feel me, at this point. But at the end of the day, man, it all, you feel me, it all stemmed from just staying persistent and stuff like that. Because they could have gave up when all this happened. Now, I don't know if Supreme going to be able to come home on a pill because... His name been hot in the streets for a long time, and the feds been on him, you know. But at the end of the day, this situation with 50 and stuff like that, it was an ongoing situation. We all know if you grew up, you know, if you was young in the early 2000s and stuff like that, you remember when Get Rich or Die Trying came out, 50 was going that job, stuff like that. Y'all remember 50 came out talking about he got shot nine times, you know, but... Man, this is a crazy story, but let me know what y'all think about this situation. Leave your comments below. We still on that race to 10K. If you're new to the fan, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell for uploads. Y'all already know what it is. Love.